Well, I greet you in the name of Jesus Christ, Yeshua Messiah, our Lord. It is uh, the 28th of November, 2023, and it's almost 8 o'clock in the evening here in South Africa. Stormy South Africa. Um, we have had a couple of storms recently, and today was no exception. Bit of hail, and but the rain is always welcome, and fortunately no damage. Uh, the hail wasn't big. Uh, that's still to come, I guess. <laughs> Fortunately, they were relatively small, so uh, they just melt relatively quickly and provide lots more water. So everything is nice and green, and it's been tremendously hot over the last couple of days. Actually, it's a couple of record temperatures around the country. Anyway, t today, tonight, um, I want to get into... This is a video that I've been wanting to, to, to put together for a while. Uh, there's so many videos that I want to put together. And just the problem is just finding the time to do it and and more importantly what is the will of the lord what is the holy spirit saying so um i do believe that this 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 is one that uh, i need to put out i'm not going to advocate that i understand everything clearly with regards to this subject the subject being the beasts of daniel and revelations so these are the beasts of the end times the beasts that are the, the powers that will come in during the time of tribulation. Uh, there's been a lot of debate. There's a lot of teachings out there, and I'm afraid I believe there's a there's a tremendous amount of confusion and misunderstanding uh, as to who the players are that are depicted in the scriptures. So what I hope to do with this video is to is to shed some light on on what the scriptures are actually saying and and try and avoid some of the fancy uh, ideas that that some have come up with and stick to what the word is actually saying to us going back into the history and understanding from the history what 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 is what happened in the past is is, is we know that the word is written in in layers what was will be and we can look to to the things that happened in the past as a guide and an indication of what is what of what's to come and this this the, the whole subject of the the beasts of Daniel and Revelation is no exception we really need to go and look at what happened but in the context of of, of the scriptures and understanding exactly or more accurately what the scriptures are saying now in Daniel, there is, uh, I'm going to start off with, I'm going to cover the, the, the chapters Daniel 7 and uh, Daniel 8, where some detail is given with regards to the beasts. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm probably not going to get to, to the, revel, uh, the section on revelations. Um, that'll be a whole uh, video on its own, I do believe. It's, I've put it together as a, as a storyboard. Uh, to try and lay it out and understand the sequence of events where Daniel's, uh, Daniel gives us more uh, information about who the beasts are who the beast is and what uh, and what it does with a little bit of information as to when whereas uh, Revelations gives us more information about when and and what so it's more about a what and when, whereas the Daniel is more about a who, a who and what. So the first section I wanted, we need to understand who the the, the beasts are, and um, and in particular the the beast that's described in in in, uh, in in Revelation 13, the beast that comes out the sea with with seven heads and ten horns, uh, which is linked directly to Daniel 7 so I'm going to start off with Daniel 7 we will have a look at uh, we'll have a look at the the, the the ram and the goat of of Daniel 8 uh, but I just need to touch on in Daniel in Daniel chapter 2 uh, where it's the story of the the vision that uh, King Nebuchadnezzar had um, with regards to the statue that had a gold head, a silver uh, upper torso, bronze um, waistline, and then of course the, the legs of iron uh, ending with the feet of, of a mix of iron and clay. Um, 
we we see f the, we we are we are taught in that uh, in, in that section of, of of the scripture that there are four empires or four powers coming, starting off with Nebuchadnezzar as the as the head. Uh, we are not told exactly. We're only told about the head. We know that Daniel says that you're the head. Jesus tells Nebuchadnezzar he's the head, but that there'll be other nations of uh, that will be following, and four and he refer uh, four, well four specifically. He doesn't name them at that point in time, but we know that uh, we're from other scriptures, and in particular Daniel seven, we can start piecing who who the various uh, f who those four are and who they relate to. So so they so Daniel seven is very much linked to Daniel uh, chapter two and and the the statue that was uh, depicted there. Just in terms of the timing of these things, when Daniel received these visions, I think it would be worthwhile just bearing in mind some of the timing. So I'm going to go to the biblical chronology, and I call this the biblical chronology because it's a chronology from all the way from Adam to the arrival of our Messiah, entirely based, exclusively based on biblical scriptures. No other influencing factors from outside. Yes, some of these things have been verified by outside documentation and historical records and all sorts of uh, various archaeolog archaeological finds etc nevertheless the bible provides enough information to be able to put a chronology and order of events with exact timing in terms of years all the way from adam to the baptism and then of course ultimately the crucifixion of jesus christ and into our current day so I always go back to this document to try and understand a little better when when did these events happen? When did Daniel receive these visions in in relation to the historical events that were happening at the time? Because it does put a little bit of perspective on it. Just by the way, if if you ha if you haven't seen my videos um, on on these on the on the chronology and the biblical chronology, I've done an extensive amount of of work on understanding this and and trying to relay uh, to my brothers and sisters in Christ and those that are interested what the what the biblical chronology is and, and how uh, and I've, I go through it in four videos with a fair amount of detail uh, please have a look at my channel you'll find them there I haven't opened it up yet so I'm, I won't be able to show you now but have a look at those videos for a clearer understanding this is one area that I believe every Christian should understand we don't spend enough time understanding the biblical chronology, the order of events and of dates, and and I think this is this is what has caused a lot of error to have crept in the understanding of the scriptures. Okay, so without going any any further, then let's have a look at when these events occurred. In, we, we, if we have a look at Daniel two with regard to the statue, we know that um, Daniel received that that uh, uh, prophecy. He said in the second year. Of, of Nebuchadnezzar so if we have a look at uh, Nebuchadnezzar this is this would have been his um, sorry that would have been his, his f Nebuchadnezzar came in here Nebuchadnezzar that's his first year so Nebuchadnezzar sef second year by the way these dates are uh, are related in other words the chronology are interlinked these are interlinking dates we know when Jeremiah prophesied for 40 years for example we know that these dates are linked to the kings in this time period uh, these dates were linked to the the the, the kings of of uh, Israel and and Judah uh, in this case uh, by this time the 10 tribes had, the, the tribes of the house of Israel was already disbanded they had lost their land but the so now we're looking more in terms of the time, and, and it, there's a clear link to the fifth year of, of, of Jehoiakim in this case. So we know exactly when Nebuchadnezzar came into power. We know exactly where his second year is. And Daniel made this, he says, in the second year of Nebuchadnezzar is when he interpreted the, 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 the dream. Um, so that would have been uh, in the third year of of them of the of his captivity he would have gone into captivity uh, just three years prior uh, just before Nebuchadnezzar came to power he would have gone into captivity that would have been the beginning of the 70 years of captivity for 
Daniel, Shadrach, and Meshach, and a whole that was the first group of captivity. That, but that was long before the, the temple was destroyed. But nevertheless, the first group where, where the um, the king of Babylon took his captives in. So Daniel receives it in, the th in his third year of captivity, which will be in the second year of Nebuchadnezzar, the, the, the vision of the, the statue. And then he doesn't receive any, uh, the next vision he receives is uh, related to the end time beasts, was the vision of the, the four beasts, uh, which he received, he said, was in the first year of Belshazzar. So Belshazzar was the last uh, Babylonian king. Uh, there were a couple between, after Nebuchadnezzar, there were a few. There was um, evil Merida, Meridach, uh, there's Neragal, there's Labashi, Murdoch, Nab Nabonidus, uh, some of these tongue twister names. Anyway, Belshazzar comes in um, at this point in time, by that stage, this was now Daniel's 65th year of captivity or the 65th year of the 70 years. That would have been when uh, in, in Belshazzar's first year and the year that he uh, received the vision of the four beasts, that's Daniel uh, chapter 7. And then uh, two years later, in the third year of uh, Belshazzar, he received the vision of the ram and the he goat. Uh, now this is this is where the, it gets interesting because in this vision, he's is seeing he, speak, he sees of a ram which is told is 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 uh, Persia. Uh, you must understand Persia was not even on the scene yet. This was a year before uh, before Darius and and uh, Cyrus attacked. Uh, and uh, took uh, took power in in Babylon. So one year before, one year before uh, uh, Persia arrives on the scene, Daniel gets the vision of their destruction. Not the dis so before the ram even comes on the scene, he's told how the ram is going to be taken out by the he goats. <laughs> um, that's how God works. I mean, it's just amazing. So he, not only did he know that. Uh, uh, Babylonians days were finished he also knew uh, how uh, Persia would be taken out the, how the the next uh, group would be taken out so that was so that was he, he received that vision a year before uh, 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 Darius and the Mede and Cyrus came on the picture and then of course two years uh, after that it was one two in the third year that's when he received the sorry so two uh, uh, correction Mm. A year after that, so in Cyrus's first year, so we because this was in uh, Darius. Uh, let me just see it. Darius. That was the third year there. Darius. The, uh, Cyrus. Sorry, it was yeah. It was later on. This is when he receives. No, uh, getting myself in a knot yet. Okay, this was when the begin when the seventy seventy uh, sevens began in the first year of Cyrus the king, but he received the vision of the 77s in uh, two years before that, in the first year of Darius, where this was the time when Darius uh, governed with uh, Cyrus for a period of two years, and then Cyrus became sole king uh, in the third year. And that's when the 70 weeks kicks off, when in, in Cyrus's first year, he decrees he issues the decree to rebuild Jerusalem and, and, and the streets and the temple, of course. So that's when the decree was issued, but he received the visions. So you can you can see that the vision of the four beasts would have been five years before um, before Persia arrives on the scene. And the vision of the, uh, sorry, not, not, not uh, yeah, f uh, not five years, uh, three years before the, Persia arrives on the scene, and then um, the the vision of the ram and the and the goat a year uh, before the uh, Persia arrives on the scene. So th that just gives you some context in terms of the timing. Um, so I, I always think that's very interesting to have a look at. Okay, so so getting into Daniel seven, 
we need to start off there. We, we're, we're given the, the four beasts in, in, in described in order. So I'm just going to start off with the first one. Um, okay, again, I'm trying to fair, share a fair amount of information on, on a screen. So um, it, it'll be a bit difficult to on a, on a small screen like a, um, a smartphone to follow. So I'd, I'd recommend that um, maybe switch to a larger screen you'll have a better view of 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 the of, of what we're trying to say here but nevertheless i'm going to try and read through it so you will be able to follow on a small screen as well to some degree all right in daniel chapter 7 we we are told there that the the first beat the, the first beast that we was like a lion and had eagle's wings and i beheld so the wings there were plucked and it was lifted up from the earth and made to stand upon a feet as a man and a man's heart was given to it so at first glance, all right. So we we know that it's a lion. Uh, he, he has he was had wings of an eagle, and he was made to stand up at, at a point in time, and a man's heart was given. So, what what the first thing you need to ask is what what is all this detail about uh, with regards to lift standing up on his two feet and giving a man's heart? Uh, there's no, I believe that information is there so that we can make the con the clear connection that because uh, we're not told specifically directly that this line is a Syria or uh, uh, sorry but more specifically Nebuchadnezzar um, and the Babylonian Empire we're not told that we, but we can see by the events we know that Nebuchadnezzar for example was was taken off his throne and for seven years he was given the heart of a beast he was in the wilderness like an animal and it was uh, and then eventually he was taken lord brought him back out of the wilderness and was given the heart of a man and he stood on his feet again and he was reinstated so do you believe that this is enables us to make the clear connection this is related to the babylonian empire so if we have a look at that empire that existed at the time and uh, i think this was a um, this is a very good map to have a look at it uh, we can see this green part here would have been the area that uh, that Nebuchadnezzar and the Babylonians were in control of. So that's the whole. You know, this, there's Israel over there, and uh, so it was up to the Euphrates River, Tigris River, that section there. It didn't extend into. This was uh, Persia and Media. Uh, so it didn't extend. So this dark green area is uh, was was the Chaldean the Chaldeans or the, uh, the the Babylonians. Okay. So that's that's the empire we're referring to when we cons when we when we're talking about the the lion. Uh, what exactly the wings are? I haven't really been able to figure it out as to what it was in relation to the time of of Nebuchadnezzar. But I believe it's in relation to God's favor uh, Nebuchadnezzar clearly was an ungodly man and yet he had received favor from the Lord for his purposes and he's used Nebuchadnezzar uh, for his purposes to make it to uh, in, in his plan I believe that's what it is and we need to uh, so we'll, we'll talk about that again when we start looking at what the uh, who this beast is in today's time and I think it's very important to know where the, the areas where these empires are. That's why I brought these maps in. Because that's, that's I believe, is the key to understanding who the lion is in today's time. So we'll get into that a little bit later. I will mention a few things. Let's have the, the next beast that he's given us. is goes on to Daniel 7, chapter, verse 5. It says, And behold, another beast, a second, like, uh, like a bear, and it was raised up, and it raised itself, it raised itself on one side, and it had three ribs in the mouth of it, between the teeth of it, and and they said thus unto it, or they were told, arise, and devour much flesh. Okay, so yeah, we we sh we it's, we're not given a lot of information except we know that it's a bear. It's raised up to one side, and it's got three ribs in its mouth, and. I believe that we should understand when you look at the original text the understanding is that the ribs are to devour much f flesh not necessarily the bear although it's written the translators tend to put a slant to it 
in that direction where but I think it's it's about the ribs that are devouring much flesh having instructed being re received instruction from the bear okay so we know that in in the in the statue this was this would have been the second uh, this would have been the the, the the silver portion of the statue um, so this this is and this is clearly uh, uh, the Medo-Persian Empire the, the those that the, that overtook the Babylonian Empire and eventually extended all the way into Egypt and into almost into 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 Greece etc so they covered a very large area Next, let me just make it bigger so we need to understand that the Media Persian Empire was quite extensive okay it included this whole area this is where Turkey is today this is the area where Turkey is Egypt okay this is where this area today is Iran this is Iraq and then we've got Syria and then Israel and okay so you can orientate yourself so that was the Medo-Persian Empire the silver in the statue of the second empire the second beast and the bear now again we'll talk about this in today's context right then the, the third one verse 6 it says after this I beheld and lo another like a leopard which had upon the back of it four wings of a fowl and the beast had four heads and dominion was given to it so like a leopard four wings of a fowl of a bird not an eagle just a bird and then and it had four heads okay and this being the is it's clearly associated with the bronze section of the beast the third empire and this is a map of its its reach and we'll see that this is almost the entire same area as the original Medo-Persian Empire. Okay, that was the Persian Grecian Empire. We we and we'll get a little bit more into this when we look into the the goats, the ram and, and the goat, because um, it's this empire that's uh, that comes into it's between the the Persian Empire and the Grecian Empire. Uh, and I prefer to use the name Yavan because Grisha is actually Yavan um, and there's a clear link to uh, Yavan is one of the sons of um, Japheth so that was Alex Alexander the Great uh, the he goat and the ram later on we'll see that and that was his empire I'll just see, uh, zoom in a little bit you'll see the pathway that he came in he started in uh, Mas was from Macedonia and um, I think I've got a I've got a better picture of his of the route that he took that uh, in in his in his in his in his conquest. Uh, just I'm gonna <laughs> just go get this some historical information that's very interesting, uh, and I just want to touch on that. It's it's uh, I'll just see. I think I've got uh, want to use this one here. So we'll see, there's see Macedonia, um, Pella, that's where he started his conquest and he worked through Asia Minor. This is area of Turkey today. He went down and conquered Egypt. He came back, he took over this Mesopotamia area where uh, Syria is today, uh, Iraq area, took over and he then entered in and this is when he started his conquest of Persia and uh, Persia and Media interesting thing is that he when he entered into the area of Persia he started his conquest in uh, it's marked here as Susa it's also the name as Shushan in the Hebrew and it was this is where Daniel was uh, where he received whether in the spirit or physically I believe it was probably spiritually because he would have been in Babylonia when he received the vision but uh, he, he saw himself in Shushan in Daniel 8 if we just go to um, Daniel 8 I saw in a vision and it came to pass when I saw 
that I was in Shushan. So he, w he saw a vision and when he saw he was in Shushan, in the place which is in the province of Elam. So he sees the vision of the ram and the goat uh, in a, the exact place where Alexander the Great began his conquest of, of the ram. Very interesting. Anyway, so yeah, so he went. He, he would have done a circle, and he would in his uh, in his exploits, he would have he would have destroyed and overcome the whole of uh, Persia, and this is by and this is more or less where he also ended his his um, his empire building. Just some interesting facts: he was uh, Alexander the Great was twenty years old when he departed on his conquests and he completed this conquest in 13 years so he was 33 years old when he had completed his conquests and he died at the age of 33 so just some uh, information sideline information for us okay so um let's just get back to the the main yeah right so we've got so we know we we, we, we know that the third beast is associated with the third empire, the empire of brass. And that's an important thing that we must remember. And we're told that it, it, it's got four heads. Now this was is, is related to later at, the, at Alexander's death. Um, he, his empire was, was split into, into four. Uh, the four generals, his four main generals would have split the empire and this is a, a map depicting more or less how the empire was split. We had the Ptolemy um, area, the Selu Seleucus area, uh, Cassander and Lysimachus. Those are the four heads. So the one later on in Daniel 8, we'll see a little bit more detail on this split but I believe it it is, although it's not, again, we're not specifically told that this leopard is Alexar is the, the Grecian Empire, or the Empire Alexander that was later spread before, but I think you can see the pattern. It is the third, it is the bronze one, and uh, so there, there's clearly a link there between them, a similar situation in these two. So we've got some... I'm not sure exactly who what the four wings of the bird are. I haven't been able to figure that out. Um, um, then I think we'll come in time for a greater understanding there. Okay, so and then Daniel 7, the fourth beast now, in, chapter, in verses 7 to 8, he said, After this I saw in the night visions, and behold, a fourth beast. And this one was dreadful and terrible, and strong exceedingly. And it had great iron teeth, and it devoured like uh, devoured and break in pieces and stamped the residue or the remaining with with with, with the feet of it and it was diverse or the word is alter it was diverse or, or different or alter an alteration from the other beasts and i think there's more to it than what we've cared to take note of. i think these are this is this is uh, in fact i believe linking this fourth beast to the other to the three that came before it doesn't specifically say that, but I think we got it. We can we can see that we'll see that this is I think what is implied. And uh, and it goes on to say that they were before it, uh, uh, sorry, uh, fr from all the beasts that were before it, and it had ten horns. Okay, so we don't know much about what it looked like. We know that uh, it had ten horns, and we know that it was uh, ferocious. And it had uh, teeth, uh, uh, iron teeth. Again, iron teeth. I think we, we're looking at a link to the fourth, um, the the fourth kingdom, or the fourth empire in in the vision, the the legs of of iron. And these are just hints. It doesn't specifically say that, but I believe it is related to those four. And this is where we start getting some interesting. Uh, uh, information coming forward to us um, in, in Daniel's writings because he goes on to say that uh, so I've, I've sorry I've just put it in red because I believe that there's um, there's a link later on and uh, just bear with me uh, this is a little bit of poetic license but you'll see that it'll all come together 
Okay, uh, we know that it was diverse. It was different. It was alteration. So it had to be something very different. Okay, uh, I've put the four horns on, on the beast, not on necessarily on its head. I, 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 all the diagrams and everybody that that I've all the depictions I always seem to want to place the horns on the head, and I don't believe that is the way Daniel saw it. I think these horns come out of the body of the of the beast. So I've depicted it that way for that reason. So Daniel goes on to say, and I said, uh, and he goes on to say, I considered the horns, and behold, there came up uh, among them another little horn, before before whom there were three of the of the first horns plucked up by the roots, and behold, this horn, in this horn were eyes like the eyes of a man, and mouth speaking great things. So we're given a picture of um, of the horns being plucked out and replaced. Uh, I've moved that out to the end here because I believe that what we're seeing here is this this uh, verse 8 of, uh, of Daniel 7 is more future. There's a gap. This is, this is leading to, this is the end result of the beast, I believe. This is this end result. Um, so we, we, we've got of the of the ten horns, three are plucked up and the little horn comes to fall with the face of um, okay, so we've got the three horns plucked up and the little horn coming um, to, to the fore there. So I will get to this final result, this final resulting beast. But I believe that's where Daniel is heading towards. He's describing the end result here. Okay, if we carry on in Daniel 9 and 9 to 12, he says, I beheld. Uh, now he seems to go back in time a little bit. Uh, he says, I, I beheld until the, the thrones were cast down, and the Ancient of Days did sit, the, whose garment was as white as snow, and the hair of his head was like pure wool, and his throne was like a fiery flame, and his wheels as a burning fire. And a fiery stream issued uh, and came forth from before him, and thousands, uh, thousands, thousand thousands ministered unto him, and ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him. And the judgment was set, and the books were opened. Now this is remarkably similar to the, the story and the setting in Revelations chapters 4 and 5, where we, where we see in this, of the, 24, the thrones of, of, that are laid bef, uh, on which the 24 elders sit. We, we describe the thrones of, of God, and, and we describe in Revelations chapter 1 the, his, his, his appearance. So... Um, and also in chapter in Revelation 5, the 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands and thousands that that were before him. That so we've these things are all. I believe that this is for us to see about the timing. Um, this is related to the beginning of Revelations before the seals. This is what he's seeing here. He's, he's, that's, he's, this is a, a scene of the of the of the setup in Revelation before the seals are opened up. And then it goes on in verse 11, it says, I beheld then because of the voice of the great words which the horn spake, I beheld even until the beast was slain and his body was destroyed and given to the burning flame. And as concerning the rest of the beasts, they had their dominion taken away, yet their lives were prolonged for a season and a time. So this is the end result again. Um, he, he, he sees all a lot of things happening and he describes the end result where this beast is slain. And thrown into the burning flame, so that's the uh, that's the we is depicting the second after the end of seals, whereas this is before the seals. So we know that the the beast is destroyed at the end of seals, um, and is and is and is thrown into the bottomless pit at the end of seals. So I think that's what this timing we've got almost like a split a timing situation where Daniel seven to eight is uh, is before that and Daniel. Verse 8 is, is the end result of the description of the beast. And then, of course, he goes back a little bit in time and put to give us perspective. Um, so this beast is related to the time of seals. doesn't say that, but I think there's enough information for us to see that this beast that we're talking about is related to seals. So now I want to go into the, the makeup of this beast. If we... I just want to zoom in a little bit. If we have a look at this beast, we saw that it 
the three before it was the lion, the bear, the leopard. The fourth beast is a beast in its own right. But I believe it becomes, we've got here, if we ever look at, we've got a description of the Revelations um, 13 beast. With seven heads and ten horns. If we see the combination of these four beasts, we'll count their heads. It's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven heads and ten horns. Um, and then, of course, Revelation goes on to describe this beast with seven heads and ten horns to have the feet of a bear, linking us to the bear. The um, it was like a leopard, and um, he had the mouth. He had the mouth of a lion. So we've got the leopard, the lion, and the bear within this beast. It's like Daniel was kind of wanting us to see that this is this this beast is really a combination of all of them. And when and in Revelation we're not given this breakdown. We're not told the makeup of this. We're told this one straight: seven heads, ten horns, um, and the feet of a bear, and 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 the mouth of a lion, and like a leopard. We can go and read that. I think I've got it here. Um, so Revelation one three. And I stood upon the sand of the sea, and I saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his, his horns ten crowns. Okay, so they still had their own authority at that point in time. They hadn't given it away. And upon his heads the names of and upon his heads the names of blasphemy. And the beast which which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. So that's why I, I put this in red. We later on in Revelations, um, we we told about the dragon, the red dragon that appears in Revelation chapter 12. We were told about the red dragon that, that appears in heaven. Um, and here we told that the dragon gives this beast his power. And that's why I put this beast in red, to depict the power that was given to him by, by the dragon. So there's a, there's a fair amount of information. These are clearly, I mean, that description fits perfectly the matchup the combination of these beasts fits up perfectly the the the, the matchup in in revelations so i think it, i think it would be safe to say that what what daniel 7 was really describing was the the the, the beast of revelation 13 1 uh, but with enough information so that we can now know what makes up this this beast which 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 empires are in this beast of revelation 13 1 we just have to go back and look at the empires of the original four beasts. Okay, I didn't mention here that this fourth beast at Daniel's uh, in the in the in the wars was obviously Rome. Um, let's just have a look at that. So we know that the Roman Empire was the one that came and stamped and destroyed the temple, etc., and with all the various reasons. I can't dispute. I can't argue that 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 it was that that final one was Rome. The interesting thing about this this um, this particular empire is that we need to take note of the nature of this empire. It was it, it was an empire that was largely uh, was to a large extent um, religious based. Uh, it became I mean it's it's through the years it became a religious fraternity, really Christian. Uh, religion based uh, empire so I think that's something that we need to take note of I'm not convinced that th that Rome has anything to do uh, that this particular empire uh, it will repeat itself uh, as some believe um, I believe that this the, the, the a different a similar animal but a different empire will come to the fore and I believe that that will be also religious based but not Christian this time this time it'll be Islam, um, but I, th I think that's where we we the only degree of similarity. Again, of course, Islam is also just like the Christians had two legs. We had the East and the West uh, uh, Orthodox churches. Uh, we we've got in within Islam you've got the Sunnis and the Shia. So we've got a, a and which are two major opposing forces within that religious fraternity. And I think that the picture is the same, but uh, it will be different this time. Okay, and the reason why I'm going to, I believe it will be, is because of the countries that are involved. So if we go to the, the original animals, 
we saw that the line was associated with uh, with uh, with Babylon, uh, the, uh, today's Iraq and Syria, and then of course this whole area where Israel is today and Jordan and all that. That was that was the original area. Um, so that um, w was overtaken by the by the the Medes and Persians and extended. Okay, so it became a greater area, and then virtually that entire area uh, was taken over by the by Yavan. Okay, Grecian is Yavan, uh, who was one of the sons of Japheth. So we've got virtually the entire uh, Alexander the Great taking control of virtually the entire original uh, Persian Median Empire, and then. Um, So if we have, and then we know that uh, that Alexander the Great's empire split into the four. So those are the four areas. I'm going to deal with the Gog Magog story. If we go to Ezekiel 38, we know that the Ezekiel 38, or more specifically the 39 war, because 38 is the prelude to the actual war in 39. Ezekiel's um, 38, 39 war we know it comes at the end of seals um, and that will be an attack on the uh, on, on, on Israel with the people having come back the Lord having brought the Israelites back into their land and we know that the, the, the f these uh, uh, these countries or these uh, empires or these, these kings will, will will gather together to attack that re-established um, Israel after having been out of the land for, s for for seven years. By the way, if you're new uh, to what I'm speaking about, you're first of all, the tribulation uh, is not seven years, it's 14 years. And the first seven years are seals, and the second seven years are the, are the, are the trumpets. Uh, and many believe that the 38-39 war is the beginning of tribulation. No, it doesn't. It occurs at the end of the seals, but before the trumpets. Okay, so if you want a better understanding of that, I'd really recommend. I'm going to provide links in my description box to Ministry Build and here and his and the videos and and there's also a book that you can go and read it to have an understanding of what the the true end times, uh, end, the timing is of the, of these of these wars. Uh, uh, the the scope of this video goes beyond that goes beyond the scope of this video, so I'm not going to get into the detail of that, but. If we have a look at, I just want what I would like to do is get in because we know uh, that the beast at the end of Revelations in Revelations, which is the beast that Daniel described in Daniel seven, is also must be related to these uh, these these kings uh, and these countries that are that attack Israel at that time, we, at the time when the beast is destroyed. So these the the the, the the countries involved in the 38-39 war is the beast. It's one and the same thing. So I'd like to just go into, we need to have a look and see what is in, uh, what, what are these countries. And we, we're told in Ezekiel, the, the Son of Man set, set thy face against Gog, the land of Magog, uh, the prince of, of uh, Meshach and Tubal, and, pro, pro, and prophesy against him. Uh, Persia, Ethiopia, and Libya, with them all, with them, all of them, with shield and helmet. Uh, goes on to say, Gomer and all his bands, and the house of uh, 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 Togomara of the north quarters, and his bands, and many people with him. So we we see a whole lot of names now, and again, there's a there's an association with with Russia, with being Gog and all that nonsense. I don't believe that's the case at all. Um, this is. Let's just have a look at who, who these people are. We know that Gog, Meshach, Tubal, Goma, uh, Tagoma. Um, these are all uh, descendants of Japheth. So Japheth, uh, the sons of Japheth are Goma and Magog, um, and there's Javan. Remember, Javan is Grisha, okay, and Javan and Tubal and Meshach, and then the sons of Goma is uh, Togoma, and then of course the sons of Javan is Tarshish, 
which we'll also read about in these uh, in these scriptures. There. In Ezekiel 38, it refers to Tarshish. We'll get to that now. So we see that these are all the sons of Javan. Um, of course, Ethiopia and Libya are, are more related to uh, Put, uh, and who is, it's more about Kush. So Ethiopia and Libya are related to Kush, and not to uh, Javan, but they also seem to be included in this group that comes against. And then it goes on to say in 38.8, it says, After many days thou shalt be visited in the latter years, thou shalt come into the land that is brought back. Okay, brought back. That's the um, Israelites brought back from kept from the sword, from captivity. With the sword is the, 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 the beginning of, um, of tribulation. And is gathered out of many people against the mountains of Israel, which have been always waste. So by that time, the Israel will be a wasteland again. And it, but it is brought forth out of the nations, and they shall dwell safely, all of them. So this is because they are going to be dwelling under the protection, supernatural protection, of our Lord God. Um, so that the fishes of the sea, and the fowls of the heaven, and the beasts of the field, and all creeping things that creepeth upon the earth, and all men that are upon the face of the earth shall take shall shake at my presence and the mountains shall be thrown down and steep places shall fall and every wall shall fall to the ground this is all closely related to uh, the sixth seal when the, everything is shaken and they hide in, under, under the, in the caves shouting uh, when they see uh, the Lord coming that's what this is related to uh, it's the end of seals and the beginning of trumpets and that time when uh, when God steps in and protects them against this group and he, you, you can go and read there in the detail of that so uh, Ezekiel uh, we also read in Ezekiel 38 13 he says there was a group that stood by didn't get directly involved this is uh, Sheba and Dedan who are the merchants of Tarshish. Tarshish is related to Javan, but Sheba and Dedan are related to Cush and Ham, ultimately. And of course, Put is also. Put and Libya, Put is the same area as Libya. <coughs> so for some reason, part of Ham gets involved in this in this war against the reinstated, reinstated Israelites, or God, people of God. And, but not all uh, and then it goes on uh, 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 um, merchants of Tosh and with all the young lions thereof shall say unto thee art thou come to take a spoil as thou gathered thy company to take a prey to carry away silver and gold and take away cattle and goods and take away a great spoil so some sit on the sidelines anyway let's have a look at who these guys are so when we if we go into the history we know that the, the, this area where Turkey is today is typically the area associated with the uh, with the the area that was allocated to Japheth and his descendants and his descendants were Gog, Gomer, Tubal, Meshach and this is the area that was theirs. Africa was given to Ham and his descendants and then of course the Middle East going uh, eastwards would have been given to Shem and his descendants. But this area going going west, uh, including Europe would have been given to Javan. So we can see that this area from Turkey is the area associated with these people that come against um, Israel at in the, in the Ezekiel 38-39 war. So if we just go and have a look at, we see that in, in, in the beast scenario, this would have been this area here where it's partly Seleucus and Lysimachus, uh, this blue area here. Now there's a very interesting connection here that I think we should take note of. When we look at the seven churches, we see that in Revelation 2.12, uh, when, uh, when the Lord is speaking and writing a letter to the church of uh, Pergamos, or Pergamum, and to the angel of the church in Pergamos, write, These th things saith he which has the sharp sword. Uh, again, we've got the sword linked to it and, and, uh, with two edges. And I know thy works and, and where thou dwellest, even where Satan's seat is. And thou holdest fast my name and hast not denied my faith even in 
those days wearing Antipas was my faithful uh, was my faithful martyr who was slain among you where Satan dwelleth so if we go and have a look at where Pergam Pergamum or Pergamos is it's it's right up here there's the other there's Ephesus Smyrna Pergamum Thyatria Sardis Philadelphia and Laodicea so Pergamum is sitting right in this in this section here which is this blue section here so it looks like where Satan dwells is in this this blue section Lysimachus which was one of the four heads of of the leopard now we know later on there's a connection to this and uh, uh, to this four heads um, in, in, in in Daniel uh, chapter 8 and I'm gonna have a look at Daniel chapter 8 now but I just needed to point out to these some of these interesting things that we need to take note of um, just another thing before I move out of this section is the who are the ten horns uh, of this beast who are these ten horns I believe the ten horns are given to us in the Psalms uh, so, uh, in, in Psalm 83 we, we see we read of these ten uh, groups of tribes or nations whatever you want to call them that make a confederate they make a, a, an agreement uh, to come against um, Israel um, now there's a connection there um, in, in, you'll see this connection of uh, just remember this this agreement you'll see in Daniel 8 there's a connection yeah between this confederate this agreement in Daniel 8 as well um, to uh, the beast so the uh, against uh, so against it, then the tabernacles of Edom the goes and, and, and the Ishmaelites and of Moab and um, Hagarines and uh, Gabal and Ammon and Amalek and the Philistines uh, with the inhabitants of Tyre and Asher also is joined with them and they are, are hoping they are have help in the children of Lot now the children children of Lot of course are um, Ammon and Moab those were the sons of of the two daughters of Lot Moab became a nation and Ammon became a nation okay so those so it's not you can't count them as it so there are ten here so if you count them we would one two three four five six seven eight nine ten Asher is Assyria as you can go and check it out for yourself Asher is associated with Syria so um, I've got this on a on a picture that you can just uh, I think it's on this side yeah, let's just go there Okay, so we, if we have a look at these 10, they, uh, I've got two maps because this one was fairly good, but it wasn't totally correct. So I brought in another one uh, just to compare. But we've got the 10 here. We've got, we can start with uh, Edom. We've got Edom, the Ishmaelites, which would be Saudi Arabia. Uh, we've got Moab and, and, and um, Ammon, which are the children of Lot. Okay, these guys have got them in the wrong order here on the map. Edom is lower down and, and Ammon is above Moab so they've labeled them in incorrectly um, the Hagarite is about in the right place um, and then you've got Assyria which is the Asher and then you've got Gabal which is um, related to Tyre uh, they've got it correctly Tyre is of course Lebanon area Philistilia is the um, Gaza area those the Philistines the uh, Palestinians today and then Amalek, these were the guys that attacked the uh, Israelites when they came out of Egypt. They they are a nomadic uh, tribe. They were nomad. they didn't they they drifted around in the deserts. The, the label is probably in the correct place. Um, these guys have got the correct order. You've got Edom, Moab, and Ammon in the correct places. Yeah, but they don't have Amalek. Uh, which would have been in the desert areas yeah the, the, the Ishmaelites of course would be in Syria and then of course they there's they got Hagarites there but that's the same king it's the kingdom of uh, um, Aram and Damascus that's that's the Hagarites um, so and then of course the Assyrian which we now know today as uh, Syria okay they they don't they've got Tyre but they don't have Gabal which is associated with Tyre in the scriptures they don't have a lot of information on Gabal but we know it, they were in the same 
vicinity as as Tyre. So that that just kind of gives you that's where that's these I believe are the ten horns associated with the beast. Um, so the, uh, the the beast is the greater area, um, and of course then we've got the horns, um, which are uh, all surrounding um, surrounding Israel. Um, so I think that that gives us if we, we've now scratched into Daniel Daniel seven quite extensively, and we need to get into Daniel eight because it's related. Um, and yeah, in Daniel eight. Uh, we, we, we're told from Dan from verse 3 and 4, he says, um, Then I lifted up my eyes and saw, and behold, there stood before, and remember this was given in Shushan, uh, stood before the river uh, a ram, which had two horns, and uh, the word, and, and this is, Alan this, uh, uh, discovered this uh, word horns, it really relates to mountains or kingdoms as opposed to horns, the horns uh, that are dip spoken of in, in Daniel 7 are horns as in um, the true sense of a horn, uh, uh, a cornet. But it's a different word used in Daniel 8. So this horn is associated more with mountains or kingdoms. We know that the, the heads, the seven heads are seven mountains. And the same, uh, yeah, we're talking about a word that's related more to mountains or, uh, or kingdoms as opposed to horns, which are, are more related to kings, which is an important thing to take note of because it helps us to understand uh, a particular aspect of, of the beast. So that's why I've highlighted, yeah, we're getting to that now. So that, that this ram had two horns or two kingdoms, if you want to call it two mountains. And the two two horns were high, but one was higher than the other, and the higher came up last. And and I saw the ram pushing westward and northward and southward, so that no beast might stand before him. Neither was there any that could deliver out of his hand, but he did according to his will and became uh, became great. So that's the the ram. And then Daniel goes on to say, and I saw, and I considered, behold, a he goat. It's a male goat, and it came from the west uh, on the face of the whole earth and touched on the ground sorry and touched not the ground and the goat had a notable uh, horn now both of these words are there's a the, you've got to get into the the background the notable is uh, is agreement or vision that's a, a the notable is agreement uh, related to now you remember we had that confederacy of the ten there's a there seems to be a connection here uh, this notable horn, uh, which is also the mountain or kingdom, between his eyes, and he came to the ram um, that he had that had two horns, which I had seen standing before the river, and ran into him with fury of his power. Okay, so he sees the ram, the the goat uh, attacking the the ram, and he goes on to say, uh, uh, so this is now. Uh, we are later clearly told that, and I haven't put the, the scripture, uh, did I put the scriptures here? No. We are later told that the the ram is Persia, and we are told that this goat is Grisha or Javan. So we need to take notes. I've put them, so the ram is under the column of Persia, uh, and we know that, so therefore we see that the ram and the bear are associated with each other. So I believe that this bear has got nothing to do with Russia at all. It's not Russia. This is this is Persia. This is Iran. This bear is Iran. It's 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 the original it's the original ram. Now you remember this ram at the time was the Persian Empire. So you must take that it was it, it included not today's Iran, but it included um, Syria, uh, and it included all these uh, these these areas. We can go back to that uh, that diagram, the Persian Empire. Um, so it's, uh, uh, Iran, Iraq, Syria. Uh, Syria is in this modern day modern day Iraq and Syria are included in this, and then of course we, we even got uh, you would so. Um, I think what we, we, we got it when we understand that this ram 
that uh, that he that Daniel saw was was inclusive of that entire area. We're going to think in today's terms. This bear, this ram is the bear, and I believe that the the three the three um, ribs in its mouth are the three proxies uh, of Iran. That's um, Hamas and Hezbollah and Yemen, the, the three main uh, proxies that Iran wages war through, because they are told to go and devour much flesh. They are under the instruction of the bear. And that's where I think we, we must get this get that understanding of of who the ram is. Then of course the the goat, which is Johan, uh, Grisha. Uh, the descendants of, of Japheth, which is linked to uh, Magog and all the others together with him. Um, so he comes and destroys the, uh, and he takes over. And we saw that he took over the entire area, the entire area that, that the ram controlled, he took over control over. Alexander the Great took over that entire area. And then we see later on that it goes on to say that the, uh, after that, therefore, uh, the he goat waxed very great, and when he was strong, the the great horn, the mountain of the kingdom, was broken, and 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 four it came up four notable. There's that word notable again, notable ones. There's some agreement or vision associated with these four, towards the four winds, or the spirits. That word winds is also spirits, ruach, the four ruach of the he of the of heaven. Um, and there's a there's a link here that we need to take note of because. When you go and search for this combination of words, four spirits of heaven, there's one thing that comes out, there's in, only in a few places, but it's, it seems to be associated with the the horses, the four horses. And I just want to make that connection while I'm there. If we go to Zechariah chapter 6, now we know Zechariah chapter 6 is related to the end of seals. Um, but it, it sees here that Zechariah says, I turned and, and I lifted up mine eyes and looked, and behold, there came, a four, came four chariots. And from out between two mountains, and the mountains were the mountains of brass. So the, we've got this brass connection again to to um, uh, to, to the statue, which is you know Grisha Javan, um, the brass is Grisha Javan, um, and uh, so we've got this. They, they are involved in at the end end of seals. They're still there. Involved and out of these mountains, there, and there were two of them. I don't know who the other one, but there the were bra mountains of brass. And in the first um, chariot, in the first chariot, there were red horses, and in the second chariot, black horses, and in the third, white horses, and in the fourth chariot, grizzled and bay horses. And when I asked, uh, and when I answered and said unto the angel, What, uh, what they talk with me, what are these, my lord? And the angel answered and said, These are the four spirits of heavens, of the heavens, which go forth from standing before the, the Lord of the earth. And you can read further in there, and it speaks of them going to and fro through all the earth. It's a clear connection between the four spirits of heaven and the four horses and the four horses, the horses of revelations. There's we need to understand that connection. Okay. So this is a so this 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 one horn splits into the four which we uh, which we are told so we know that Grisha Javan Alexander the Great splits into four which is actually what happened in history and we need to take note of the of where they were okay now the, this is now the important part of of Daniel 8 because once you understand now he says out of the one of them out of one of the mountains the king is not one of the horns here in Daniel 7 when we he said um, there was a uh, three horns, uh, a little horn, and and three horns were disp were plucked up. These are horns are cornets, they're a different horn, okay, and they were plucked up uh, uh, by their roots, and 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 so, so this this horn here. This is a cornet that comes and plucks up three cornets, and 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 is given the voice, and he speaks blasphemies, but this here that we're seeing here is um, out of not. It do, it's not out of a out of a corner. It's not out of another horn. It's not the plucking up. It's not the same horn. But it is. It might be related in terms of this is this is the head perhaps, uh, or the the kingdom from which the the little horn comes up out of. Um, so there might be a connection here that we need to make. 
ask from the with regards to the, the so-called little horn okay that came up which waxed exceedingly great towards the south towards the west and towards the pleasant land and it waxed great even to the host of heaven okay so even to and, and to cast down some of the host of the stars to the ground and to stamp on them so he, he this this horn this this um this kingdom uh, gets to the point where it stamps on some of the stars now these stars here that it stamps on um, we need to try to understand who they are the hosts and the stars I believe um, are related to Luke 21 because Jesus when we know that uh, there, there will be a, a, a host a, a, an army of God a working bride that will be working at the, the church of Smyrna which will be working during the time of seals and and the Lord said some of them but if uh, some of them sh they shall lands on your persecution and delivery up uh, to the synagogues and unto the prisons and, and and being brought before kings and rulers for my name's sake and he goes on to say and they shall betray both and you shall be betrayed by both parents and brethren and kinfolks and friends and some of you uh, uh, they shall cause to put to death and that's the those are the stars that this uh, this little horn I believe this 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 group this uh, head or mountain this horn is 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 will, will will put will be involved in putting some of these initial uh, host um, initial host of of the Lord um, to death and to stamp on them and he will even magnify himself to the prince of hosts so. I believe that will be during the time of the 40 days when the, when the Prince of Hosts is here with his host. And by him, the daily, the daily, there's no such word as sacrifice in the original text. Okay, so I'll scratch that out. It says, by him, the daily was taken away and the place of his sanctuary was cast down. And um, so we need to say, now what is this? He, the, he, he, by him, the daily is, 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 is taken away. What is the daily? Uh, and what is this place of his sanctuary that's cast down? Um, I've done a fair amount of work on, on this in the past, and I've, I've, I've touched on it previously. But yeah, I believe this daily here is the daily sacrifice at the Wailing Wall. I believe that what we have been told here is that this little horn that comes up, not not the the horn, this this horn comes up much later. This cornet, this cornet here doesn't come up now comes up later okay but this is this is a little kingdom that comes to power and takes away the daily and is given an army to prevent them from into going into and uh, uh, because because of, of 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 transgression okay so and a host was given him uh, against the daily not there's no sacrifice okay so I just want to this um, there's no it's not it was inserted in italics in the original text so it's a daily by reason of transgression he was given this army to against it and he cast down the truth to the ground and he practiced and prospered so that's this little one that comes up uh, and and so this is very important to understand that this that comes out of the four this one that this this horn this this power that comes out out of the horn that waxes great is um it's one of these four. It's it's cut. He comes out of this. Um, comes out of one of these four, yeah. Because we told it. That this is the. This is the, the. The, the four heads or the four horns of the, of the he got. I believe. Pergamus and the seat of Satan has got a lot to do with it because we know that the later on we learn in Revelations that the dragon uh, gives power to the beast and he gives him his seat in Revelation. I didn't bring that uh, text here but you will find it in Revelation that we'll cover it in the next um, session in, in, this, in the storyline of Revelation. You will see Satan gives the beast his power and his seat. Where is his seat? We're told it's in Pergamum. Where is Pergamum? It's in this um, the Simachus head. So I, I believe that this head, that this some, some group from here, and it could even be related to Turkey. Somebody from Turkey will be involved in this in this these events described in in uh, Daniel's Daniel nine to twelve. Um, 
so uh, that's that's where uh, I, I believe that we I'm going to see if there's anything else here that I, oh yes we need to get into the timing events um, now it goes on to say after 12 of the prophet he said and then I heard one saint speaking another saint said unto that certain saint which spake okay there's some spaghetti language okay um, how long shall it be shall be the vision concerning the daily and the transgression of desolation this is not the abomination of desolation this is a transgression of desolation is different from the abomination of desolation okay abomination of desolation will come and this uh, and that's later on this is the transgression of desolation in fact it's transgression of astonishment that word is actually more akin to as astonishment than than desolation when you go look at the original uh, meaning of the word so he said uh, how long be, uh, shall be the vision uh, concerning the daily and the transgression of desolation uh, um, to give both the sanctuary and the host to be trodden underfoot the sanctuary is the wailing wall that that whole um, that's the sanctuary, sanctuary that will be destroyed and the daily will be brought to an end how long will that be he said it will be unto 2300 days and then so the sanctuary be cleansed okay so we now know the time the time duration for this event of the daily being taken away uh, so it would appear that the, from the time that the Jews are no longer able to attend the daily sac daily prayers at the wailing wall until they are re until the sanctuary is reinstated and cleansed it will be 2300 days I'm of the view that this 2300 days is which is six and six years at six and about six and a half years is the six and a half years of seals which means that this um, if that is the case and I believe that there is enough evidence to substantiate that which means that these events uh, that are described here must happen before the tribulation starts in fact before the 40 before the 40 days starts in fact if we go a step backwards the events that are described here where this this um, he got this Javan must come and take over um, the the ram um, or overcome their ram before the start of tribulation now at this point in time we believe that that it looks like the start of the tribulation will be around about august to september of next year of, of 2024 which doesn't give a lot of time for these events to happen so i believe that what for the confirmation of this understanding we will have to start seeing something along the lines of um, these events of Daniel 8 somebody from uh, from Turkey area whether it's going to be as far far back as Greece as Greece or in, but I think it could be s from somewhere in Turkey here I think for something is going to happen that's going to cause them to attack Iran um, and well not only Iran but you remember the, the the kingdom of Persia at the time included Syria and Iraq so I believe that's that's the that's that's what we're going to be seeing here um, if we see that in the within the next couple of months then we will have confirmation of this understanding as to who this beast is but at this point in time I believe that is the the correct understanding as to who the beasts are Daniel Daniel is giving us an understanding of who the beast is Revelations is giving us an understanding of what the beast is going to do and uh, I think I've pretty much covered everything that I wanted to cover with regards to who the beasts are um, just doing a quick check here yeah yeah, I'm not sure how long I've been going on this video, but I haven't really monitored the time. I think it's uh, no, it's probably just a little bit over an hour now. I'm gonna uh, uh, the next part of the the the, the, the understanding is to take this um, understanding of who this beast is um, that Daniel described to us, and to understand and to bring together. I'm just gonna give you a full run. Bring together the sequence of events. That are described in Revelations um, 13 and 12 um, and 17. Uh, so that's that'll 
just to tantalize you a little bit um, and we'll get into the end to the storyline and, and, and I think something to look forward to is to understand that there are two children in Revelation 12, not one. There's two childs. Have a look at that. You'll see it's two different words. And I believe that's key to understanding the true meaning of Revelation 12. So uh, I think without ado, any further ado, I've pretty much covered what I wanted. I hope this is, helps you to understand um, uh, who the f who the four beasts probably are according to um, scriptural uh, understanding with um, a correct understanding of the history. This beast does not extend into as far as Russia, Europe or America or any of those. Um, we haven't got into who the Antichrist is. Of course the Antichrist is related to these things. The Antichrist is the beast this, um, and then of course there's the, the horn that speaks blasphemies etc and that we will get into in the next in the next story but at least now i believe that we have an understanding of who the the beast with the seven heads and ten horns is and which which countries it comes out of which countries are involved in modern day uh understanding and i believe that we will start getting very soon we'll start seeing some confirmation of of some of these of this understanding without any further ado i hope that bless you thank you very much